Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a video about fixing something that's ugly, unsightly, unattractive. I don't know what you say. Um, I have a uh, stretchable line that comes out of this big white casing. It's a clothesline and it, you know, it retracts when you're done using it and I hate looking at it. It's bolted to the wall in my art room and I use it to hang my paper on so it'll dry because almost all year long the ceiling fans going in here either to push heat around or to push air conditioning around so it dries very quickly and I really didn't have to use a heat gun for it um, you know so it's on all the time so what I decided to do is to cover it up I don't like the way it looks and I had an idea I'll show you what it was born out of now I can't remember where the inspiration came for this but I made this a few years ago. This is out of, um, what's it made out of? Cardstock? Yeah, cardstock. And then I had a um, bulb, Christmas bulb stamp. So I stamped a bunch of bulbs, colored them in, and I don't remember. There's a video somewhere about how I did it. And then I made like a little plug for it. And it would hang on the door to the art room. This is the way it hangs. Um, and then I liked it so much, I thought, well, I'd do one for spring, because this is winter. So this is the spring one. I think you guys have seen this before in previous videos. This is done on watercolor paper. I just used something for a backing for a um, circle and then cut out the circle and just hand drew the tulips, painted them, and then put the bow on it and made up the leaves, the whole thing. So I decided that my little holder needs something on it because it's so ugly. It's plain, it's white, it's ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a sunflower on it. So I have one, two, three pages of B paper, B watercolor paper that I think I bought off of Amazon a while ago. I can't tell you what size this stuff is. Let me get a ruler. Uh, let's see. This is nine by, I bet you it's nine by 12. Ta-da! Oh, yep, 9 by 12. Um, and I don't remember how much I paid for it. If I can find where I ordered it and leave a link, I will. So this was the least exp inexpensive, least expensive watercolor paper I have. And I think that's good enough to make sunflower petals and the inside of a sun sunflower. So I'm going to trace around the... I don't know what you call it clothesline holder and to see how big it is I held these up to it and these are too large so I need a smaller circumference so I probably will do something this would be the this would be the side of the sides of the ring here and then the petals would go off of it and then the inside would be filled unlike these so let me get started okay this is really silly to say, but it's true. I have a million tools and doodads in here. The one thing I do not have is a protractor. So, which I took this out in case the other one didn't work because I had a sneaking suspicion it wasn't going to work. So this is a Helix. And I've had this for a while now. And I really like this thing. I think it is very cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my pencil that I just sharpened in here. And look. <laughs> Life is so easy. <laughs> All right, so this will be the center. No, I need something larger. So I guess we're going to have to go for the whole schmo. Uh, where are the holes? Here we go. I think I need something larger than this. So I'm going to do a larger circle because I need something for the center portion which will be the base of the flower. And then I'm going to need more to uh, edge to glue the petals on. So let me do a small, see I didn't center this when I did it. Eh. Let me throw caution to the wind. And yes, I'm cutting this in the middle of the paper. That wasn't well thought out either. See, I never go anywhere half caught, every, anywhere fully loaded. To go. I just go off and do my thing and then y'all can all get a giggle at what a goober <laughs> my projects are. Sort of like the bowl incident. 
We're not going to go over that again. Okay, so this will be the, the center. Which is probably where I should start to begin with. Not really sure how large I want my petals to be on this thing. This is from the center, it's two inches. So that should make it four inches across, yes. Um, so I the cent I think I would like the center kind of in here. So if I'm gonna reserve the center for the inside of the sunflower, I'm gonna need to draw draw something there now. <laughs> Look! <laughs> There's a better tool. Arr. Okay. So let us decide. I think we need... Okay, so here are the measurements and the reminders for myself because, you know, I can't remember anything. The petals will be on the outside. That's where I will... I will do the outside petals here and then work my way into the center. Then I will uh, create a center and glue that on top of it. So the total circumference is four inches. From the center out, it's two, and two and two is four. I got that. <laughs> okay, so let me get to drawing the petals. Okay, so this is what I have decided to do. I'm going to take some painter's tape and put it down here because I don't want my paper moving around while I do the next part. That should be good enough. All right, so there are measurements on the mat. So what I'm going to do is for the outer the outer petals, as I showed you, are going to be one and a half inches wide. So I want to basically do one and one half, and then one to one half, one to one half, and I'm just going to keep going down. And then whatever's left over towards the bottom, I will use these for either the ones that are one inch long or the ones that are half inch because I'm not going to waste my paper. So I don't want this to be, be bopping around. All right, now the next part might disturb some of you who don't like the glare, but I want to do this on this mat because... I bought, whoops, what is all this? Oh, mercy, stuff from a book. Um, I bought a tool to use from Tim Holtz to use on this. And I thought it was a bit frivolous till I started using it, and I actually like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and tape it down here, and tape it down here. Then this hooks over the edge. And all I have to do is move it along the mat and do my one and a half inches. Because, I mean, I don't mind using a ruler, but I don't have to, I already did the measuring. I just need a straight edge, and honestly, I'm not very good with straight edge stuff, because like, I like doodling, and I don't do a lot of straight lines and doodling that are perfect lines. And this worked like a charm, so. Let's see. I think this is the one. Let me measure this one to see how wide it is. This is one and a half. Almost one and a half. <laughs> Close enough. One and a half. Ooh, one and a half. One and a half. And this is the small one. 
So I'm going to mark that off. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to do a template or what I want to do for the um, petals. I think what I will do is, is I will draw it on a piece of... the petals on a piece of paper. I should go this way. Um, I will draw these on a piece of paper that's one and a half inches wide and see if I like the way it looks on the paper. Then I will take the petal. I don't want to freehand all of this. I'm going to make a template that does the flower and, you know, to make sure they're uniform. And I know no flower is uniform, but this one will be. All right, so I need paper. <laughs> I need paper. Oh, look. <laughs> There's paper. For Pete's sake, a room full of paper, and where is it when you want it? Nowhere to be seen. All right, let's do one and a half inches. Yeah, this is one and a half inches right there. Okay, so sunflower petals are pretty skinny. I don't know if I want them more broad. Do I want them fat? I think it might be the in-between. If I hand draw them, it really will be random like real flower petals are. All right, so these are one and a half inches. This is the only one that isn't an inch and a half. So, um, I think maybe I need to take my watercolor and go over this first then draw the lines and then I can go back and do um, more watercolor for the darkness inside the petals because I don't want to take them and do one tiny petal at a time that I've already cut apart I think that makes more sense oh lord help me okay let me get the watercolor Okay, so you saw a fast-forwarded version of this. I went ahead and took my mop brush and I have some Daniel Smith Cranacridone Gold and used it for the base of the sunflower. This is wet so I'm going to dry it and then when I come back I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to draw the flowers on there then I will put uh, individual shading in each one of the petals so I can get what I want. I have something in my head. I don't know if I can make it work or not, but I kind of have it in my head. So each one of these will be individually painted. So let us dry. Okay, now since my paper is dry, uh, I need to measure this because I erased the X's off of here. And I rearranged some things on my desk that are not as convenient. That was dumb. This is inch and a half, so this must not be. That's an inch and a half. Hmm. That's weird. Okay. Well, so I'm going to start in the middle. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to draw these. Skinny ones, fat ones, medium-sized. 
and then I'm going to have to cut them out. Okay, I think, focus, focus, there we go. I think this is too fat. There's a couple in there are too fat, but doesn't matter. Not all leaves are equal, right? So I think I'm gonna erase this one. And I can do that on watercolor paper. It erases very nicely. So I'm gonna, even though I'm not gonna get two out of that same space, I'm just gonna make this one a little skinnier. And I'd probably make this one who has a weight problem. <laughs> He's a little skinnier. There we go. All right, so that's probably more like it. Alrighty, so I want to paint these to see what I like. And I'm using the a Sheehan Shihan Professional Watercolors, and I do have some Daniel Smiths in with my watercolors. There's my palette. It goes in the top here. I ought to, I thought about putting it in a um, plastic container. The only thing is, is if I use, put it through there, a laminator, and if I change any colors or rearrange them, then that will be for nothing. So I decided not to do it. All right, so with this, I have my water, I'm gonna put my water here so you can see my water. There you go. Then you can't see what I'm painting. Nope, okay, that's not gonna work either. Yee. Back where you went. Okay, so now I gotta find a paintbrush. I don't wanna use the mop. Let's use something a little smaller. And I did have a paper towel over here. Here we go. So I'm, I don't know about shading on this. I don't know exactly. How I want to do this. But I did want more layers of watercolor. So I went ahead and just did the whole sheet at once with the mop brush. Because it seems to me that was the easiest way to do it instead of painting individual each leaf individually. But I'm only doing this for shading. I'm not doing this for any other reason. Okay, so I've cut out a few of the petals, and I have a feeling <coughs> I'm going to need some more. So I think my idea is going in the right direction, but I'm going to have to double layer these because I don't want to see the orange behind the petals. Either that or I'm going to have to move them further out. Maybe that's it, and then this will be covered up with the center. Okie doe, so let me get cracking on this and I'll be back. 
So as you can see, I've glued on the first strip of leaves that I cut out, and now this is the second row. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but it's already too small. I should have done the full six inch circle, and I didn't, and then I put these too low, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to have to make an adjustment one way or the other to um, I need these to be six inches ooh too much ooh. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut other petals and put them behind here and hold them up higher so that it'll make the six inches I didn't I don't know what I was thinking Don't laugh. <laughs> it's enough that I do. Okay. So let's space this out a little bit. Some of these still have pencil marks on them, which kind of gives it a little bit of depth, which surprised me because I really didn't think I was going to leave the pencil marks, and I did. I thought I would try to film real quick. Husband's gone out of the house. Dogs are asleep. Of course, you know, as soon as I say that, something's going to happen. All right, so while I was off camera, I did what I said I was going to do, glue them on the back. So then I decided that I needed more, and I kind of liked it. So I fooled around with orange cranacridone gold from Daniel Smith, and then the... Uh, I don't know what this other color is. Anyway, <laughs> then I tried, uh, what's this orange color I used? Oh, uh, some kind of an orange from the Sheehan Korean Paints, number 422, whatever that is, I don't know. So I'm going to cut these out. get the outside of the flower done, and then, well, I have to do it in a certain way because if I want to make extend this out a little bit I'll have to put these there and then I'm going to put the smaller ones and then I'm going to do the center I hope that makes sense <laughs> um, today's Mother's Day you will not see this for a couple weeks till after Mother's Day and it has been an uneventful day I worked out in the garden for a little while I knit for a little while I did dishes oh yeah and the garbage disposal quit working and flooded underneath the sink so we had to take everything out so, you know, Mother's Day was just a lovely day with a nasty little interruption that's going to cost us money tomorrow because we've got to find a new garbage disposal. Yay! You know, uh, my husband looked up on the internet saying, well, you shouldn't really use a garbage disposal with a septic tank. Um, I do not grind up food in my garbage disposal. It's only for the bits that drain down the sink from the dishwasher because, you know, the water runs through the garbage disposal part. Um, and just a little tiny things from washing dishes by hand, that kind of stuff. I don't grind up food in the, in the uh, garbage disposal. It goes in the garbage. Because I already knew, you know, you can't put any greasy things down there. I put all my grease in a coffee can. Stinking septic tanks are more trouble than they're worth sometimes, right? Okay, well, it keeps me from having to pay extra money for city disposal of whatever. Because I know when we lived in Virginia Beach, we paid a sewage charge. And then we had water and all that other stuff. Well, the only upside to paying all those extra things is we got recycle pickup here in East Jabip. We don't get recycle pickup because they don't recycle. <laughs> um which I thought was an odd phenomenon, but, you know, 
uh, what else did we do? Um, this weekend, we went to Walmart. Uh, did we go yesterday? I think we went Friday, and then we put together a bubbling bird bath powered with a solar panel. That I, I've been watching a lot of those kind of videos because I want to make a, a water feature. But we took the pedestal from in the front yard that used to have water and little tiny rocks in it for birds that dried out 10 minutes after you pour the water in. Um, so we put it out in the backyard, and it's deep. And it um, has a solar pump on it now where there's water in it, and it's running. The funny thing is, is we set it in between the two bird feeders, and the birds are freaking out because there's something else out there they don't know about. No one's bathed in it. No one's drank out of it that we've seen so far. I'm still hoping. I don't know how long we'll leave that one in the backyard, but we're going to leave that out back for a while because the front where the hummingbird feeder is is too shady, and it won't support the um, solar power panel. So, and I don't have a... Oops, there's a dog. I don't have a plug in the front where or it's on the side of the house, but I don't have a plug over there to plug in an electric water pump. So if we put a water feature out front, whoops, in front of the house, then we can plug it in. And this other one was on the side, and we just decided it was too shady, so we took everything out, fixed it up, put it in the backyard, and no one uses it. Not yet. It's only been a couple days. We have to get over the shock. There's something out there besides millet. All right, so I'm going to finish cutting these out. And there we go. Okay. I have to have another light on. I can't see in here. There we go. Shed some light on the subject. Okay, so let's try this. I put a little green on here too. Wrong side. Vicky, get a grip. All right. See, I can't talk and <laughs> talk and craft at the same time. It's just too hard on my little brain. I'm not sure I like the look. Not sure I like this, but you know, I need to make it bigger because what's the point of trying to cover up that thing if you don't actually cover it up? So here we go. Oh my goodness. All right. I did put it up against the I can't think of what it, it, it's a retractable clothesline. I, why can't I never get this? Anyway, I put it up next to it and it's a little shy of what it should be. So that's why I thought maybe I should, you know, put more flower petals on. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> why should this video, this video be different than any of the others I've ever done? <laughs> Would you guys agree? <laughs> Don't leave a comment. <laughs> I, I got a comment the other day. Somebody left me a question mark. I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do with that. Well, I do know what to do with it because I did it. But I was like, uh, really? What's your question? I, I, don't, I don't understand. So, delete. I just, when people leave things like that, I'm... You know, I've had weird ones that leave the alphabet stuff. And, of course, I delete those. And thank goodness a lot of that stuff needs for me to take a look at it before it can be put up. But uh, this one was just a question mark. And I'm like, okay. Oh, sh I did it again. See? That only proves my point. Um, and I was like, well, um, one of the, now it's two of us that have a question. <laughs> because I don't know what your question is. What's your question? Those look too rehearsed on there. Oh, so, what have you guys been up to lately? I have been knitting my socks off. I have been knitting a ton of things. 
I have started a new project and finished a couple others, and I promised I wouldn't make this about knitting all the time, but I'm going to do a catch up with what I've been knitting on soon. I'm going to join a, a thing called Summer Sock Camp. It's all about knitting socks all summer because you don't have something hot laying on your lap. And for in Texas, that's a good thing because it gets hotter than Hades here sometimes. And it kills your joy for knitting because you just don't want something sitting on your lap touching your skin. At least I don't. Okay, let's see. If I, I thought if I put them more random, it would look a little bit better, but I don't think that's helping it any. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Oh, i got to do another row. I should have just done the whole sheet and been done with it. That makes too much sense. Why would I do it that way? Really? Okay. Well, anywho, how about that? <laughs> Doesn't it look like a turkey's rear end? <laughs> Sorry. I'm in a punchy mood. Husband's gone to pick up Mexican food for Mother's Day. And we're going to eat. I'm going to put my pajamas on and then I'm going to sit in the chair and I'm going to knit. Oh yeah, I was telling about uh, talking about my new knitting project. My new knitting project is um, the Boneyard Shawl by Stephen West. And I am using yarn from Juniper Moon Farm because I've actually been to the farm and met the owner of Juniper Moon Farm before she got married and before she had a child. We were, oops, um, those of us who went when she had an open house, I think we were some of the first people that they did a, a farm tour with. We went out there and we watched them shear the sheep. It was so cool. And we had such a good time. We were in her house and we had we took lawn chairs and we sat outside with the other people that went and it was it was like um, a family picnic all day. It was just so much fun and it really was in the middle of nowhere. This was someplace in Virginia. I can't even begin to tell you where it was because I don't know where I was. All I know I was still in the same state where I lived. <laughs> But it was so cool. Had a great time. And so I have three skeins of one of her types of yarns. I think it's a DK weight. And those of you who don't knit will never know. Uh, a DK weight is one step up from the skinniness of sock yarn. Other, no. Two, two steps up. There's, well, there's lace, fingering, sport, DK. And then it just, they get fat. Those are very, very thin. And then it gets bigger and bigger. Anyway, so I'm knitting on that right now. I started that a couple days ago. Only took me five tries to understand the instructions for one part. And I ripped it out, ripped it out. And I was determined to make it work. And I ripped it out, went and looked around for something else to do. And thought, no, don't be a quitter. So I did manage to get it going and now it's going really well but now I need new needles because I started out with a string you know you use circulars with a cable in between them and I started out with a 16 then I went to a 24 and I had to order a 32 from Amazon because this shawl that I'm knitting is going to be more wide and I don't have this Whoops, I don't have the space to um, expand. So I need longer needles or a longer cord in between the needles. All right, so I am done with this part because, you know, I have to paint more, draw more, paint more. All right, so this is going to dry. It's a, not quite, is it roundish? Let's see. Let's cover it up and take a look. Is it roundish? I'm looking at it through the camera. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, so I think I have this and I have this left. This is, uh, I've only used one sheet of the 9 by 12 B paper. And this is what I've gotten out of it so far. Just one sheet. I'm going to paint these 
cut these and glue them possibly before I see you again because I looked at the time on the um, on the camera for filming it was already at 23 minutes and I haven't edited anything and now this is 13 minutes of me going me be 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 so I'll be back and I'll show you most of it the outer stuff finished and maybe a couple of these done inside I don't know I'll be back okay so it is 5 40 in the morning and this is the only quiet time with both the dogs or with dad and <laughs> I don't have to worry about doing anything. All right, so yesterday I tried to... Uh, oh, wait, let me show you this. I did finish the outer layer. That's as much as I think I'm going to put on there. I don't... It may look a little lopsided, but, you know, it'll be fine. So I need little tiny petals around here. So I was experimenting with colors. This is kind of a... Uh, Orange, cranacridone, orange, um, gold with some green, but I think that's not going to work. Although the size might, because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and cut these in half. Well, not these, but and then I'll put the smaller flowers this way, the smaller petals this way. And then the center will be glued on top of that where you won't see them as well. Although I have these gaps here, so I may have to fill in. But I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. So I'm leaning more towards a darker color towards the center. I have this strip and this strip left over from the original sheet of paper. Oh, let me cut this off. Um, so what I'm thinking is this is, I may cut a little bit off of this one and then just, well, let me try this one first. Let's not get crazy. Let's don't get all radical. All right, so let me move this stuff out of the way. I rearranged some things on my desk, and since I rearranged them, I'm not so sure I like the rearrangement, but I do like having more of my pencils and crayons over here on the side. But then my turntable that has all the stuff I use on a regular basis is scooted off where I had moved this from, and now it's inconvenient to get over there. Not sure this is going to work. All right, so I need to try, I guess I need this right here to use as a gauge. I need to try to find a darker shade here. So if I just paint this whole thing the darker shade, no, let's not do that. Let's do this. Like we did last time, I'm just going to, except for I think I need to make these guys a little skinnier. Because they're supposed to be smaller petals. These will be cut in half. So I probably need to go all the way to the top and the bottom to get the most bang for my buck. All right, so let me experiment with some colors here. I need an orange. I'm not sure how deep an orange I want. As much as I like the Quinn Gold, I don't know if I really... want that on here. I need to put a little more water in here. This is just says orange 422. The thing about these Korean water paints, watercolor paints, is they have no names on them always. I mean they have names but orange number 422, I mean that's a little bit uh, vague. Water this down a little bit. I don't think I want that much orange on there. Well, maybe I do. 
<laughs> now that I blotted it all off. Let's, um, do I have any other oranges? Let's try this one. This one says vermilion. Well, that's lovely, but almost looks like the same orange I just put on there. Do I really want to use anything that dark? Eh, not bad. Okay. I got a booger on here. Only thing is, is I put it that dark, I have no way to shade anything. So, would the tips be darker? And it would be darker, like down here at the bottoms, because I'm going to cut these guys in half. So, the leaf might not be as dark as what will be towards the bottom of the center, or the top of the center, or the bottom of the leaf. I don't know. That seems sort of uniform, doesn't it? Well, let me go ahead and do them in the vermilion. What does it hurt? This is the day after Mother's Day and we might have to go look for a new garbage disposal. Happy Mother's Day to me. <laughs> Not exactly the gift I was hoping for for Mother's Day. All right, I guess we'll let this dry a little bit. Well, I'll go ahead and draw. More petals on here. I don't know how many we're gonna need for the smaller center. If I cut these guys in half, I think that half is going to make lots of center petals. And I need to go on the internet and take a look at the centers of real sunflowers. I'll just go to Google Images and get an idea of what I want to do for this center. Not sure if it will all just all be painted or if I will do some kind of texture. I held it up against the clothesline not quite as large to cover it up. So I was actually thinking that I could paint it, which I should have probably painted this directly onto the holder. But then if I change my mind, I have to paint over it. And this is not as easy, but it's a little more convenient for popping off and popping on. Let me put a little more water in here. Wow, it's really dark. Okay. Well, that's just vermilion on top of Quinn Gold. Yeah. Not horrible. Very dark. Let's do it a little bit streaky because I think that gives a little more. It's, I think it's a little better if I kind of streak it a little bit. All right, so I don't want to use the dryer at 5.30 in the morning, oh, 10 till 6 in the morning, so I'm going to let this dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut all these out, and then I'm going to cut them in half and lay them around the center. While I'm waiting for these to dry, I'm going to go look at Google Images and find me a center. It will probably be shades of brown for the center. Or, you know what I could do? I could paint it and then look to see if I have any seed beads and use those for the little thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be back. Okay. I don't have a tremendous amount of seed beads, but I do have these. Oops. Um, those, ooh, those are big. This reminds me of chiclets, or that's too big. That's not really a seed bead. Okay, so I don't want to use that. So 
I wish I had very tiny little seed beads. I don't have a lot of seed beads because it's not something that I collect. Oh, these might work. What do you think of the color? Fix to that. Oh, this might be a winner. Okay, so let me set these aside. Let me go, it says red and green. I love how I did this, red and green. <laughs> like I couldn't tell just by looking. This is an organization for the brain disabled, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let me go look at Google Images. Okay, so while this is drying, I went on and looked at images for sunflowers, and I don't know how to do this any other way. Let me just make this, let me see, I'm going to get this closer. Oh, Phoey, come on. All right, I was trying to make stuff larger, and I can't find it on the camera right now. All of a sudden, it's like I don't know how to use my own stuff. Here we go. So I looked at the images of sunflowers, and I did notice one thing, is usually it's only one row of petals overlapping each other. So I really messed up <laughs> for realistic stuff by doing, I've got three rows on here. So I think what I'm gonna do is, and I know this sounds kind of a radical crazy idea, since I'm already departed away from, <clears throat> excuse me, what a actual sunflower looks like, I have an idea. Well, this is kind of dry. All right, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut all these out, cut them in half. I'm gonna make, oh, I found these. These are, Those are more green. The other ones, when I turned on the light so I could see what I'm doing in here, they were more of a uh, metallic color, not actual green. So I noticed that on a lot of the sunflowers I saw in the images, they have big fat centers that take up like a big portion here. But I don't have enough um, seed beads to do that. And yes, there are some sunflowers that don't look that way. So that's what I'm going with because that's what I got. And I guess it doesn't have to look realistic. It's my stuff. Who cares, right? I was kind of hoping for something a little more realistic, but it didn't work out that way. So we're going to go with what we already got. So I think I'm going to take these, cut them in half, and I'm going to glue them around here like so. Then I'm going to get a circle and I'm going to cut it and probably put, um, what color do I want to use? A um, brown or a green. I don't like this color. Anyway, a brown or a green watercolor painted circle. Then I'm going to coat it in glue and then I'm going to or maybe do the outside with glue and then put the beads around the center and do little dots of paint in here that's kind of blackish or a dark brown more like it this way. I'm not sure I like this color for the center. Not sure at all. I mean, I've looked at all kinds of different sunflowers, and they, um, some of them even have where they're the, I didn't take a picture of that, but some of them even have color. Well, I have it here. I didn't take a picture of the ones that I'm talking about. But I did notice that there's like one row, or maybe two, only because it's one overlap and another one. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go with that as my idea. And some of them have really green centers, some of them have brown centers, some of them have a combination of brown and green. So maybe I should mix some of these in with these.
Okay, so this is dry. And I debated whether or not to glue this on here and then do the beads. I, if I screw it up, then I can't take this off. I'm not sure if I should do this separate, but then it'll look contrived. All right, so we're going to glue this on. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm going to glue. Ooh, come on. I'm going to glue this on here. Now, this is watercolor paper, so I think it needs a little more glue than regular paper because watercolor absorbs. I mean, you know, it's an absorbent paper. All right. Bye bye, center. Look at that clean water. You will never see this on this channel again. Ever. <laughs> I'm going to close this up. Just going to press it a little bit so it's flat. All right, so I want to use PVA glue to do this. But I don't want to spend all my time, well, maybe I do, squeezing it out of this little teeny bottle. All right, so here we go, people. This is a total experiment. I have no idea if this is going to work, but I'm gonna give it a try. We'll see. And I'm gonna pour some of the beads on here because I don't know. Sort of like doing um, embossing powder. It's hit or miss. Let me scoot these over. Kind of press them in. Ooh, we have an escapee. Looks pretty cool. more glue on here and then get the ones that aren't stuck already on here and see if I can get them to stick over here. Oops. Let's do it down here at the bottom. I wished I had other colors of seed beads, but I don't have a large selection because like, I, I'm just not a collector of seed beads. I don't use seed beads that often. I was just, I put these away because I couldn't bear the thought of parting with them. But I also don't want to add anything to the collection because I just, I don't want to buy any more and spit on seed beads. I'm gonna use what I have and that's when it's gone. When they're gone, they'll probably be gone or I'll buy a few to finish a project and that'll be the end of it. Because I'm going to be getting rid of my jewelry findings. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them, the ones that I already weeded through. Alright, so they're all over the place. Now I really have to stop. So I need to let them dry. So I'm going to hold them up so you can see. Might be too much. I don't know. But once they dry, I'm going to give them half a day to dry so they're good and good and done. And then I will shake off the loose ones, loose ones and then plug in with glue here, there, and yonder for the centers for everywhere else. I kind of like the way it looks. Sparkly. And I'm not a sparkle girl, but that looks very cool. All right, guys, I'll be back. Yeah, this is a really long video. I'm very sorry. I don't usually do long videos, but I think this is worth it. 
Okay, I think this is dry enough that I can take these off. Wow, that's not that many, considering how much I poured on there. Okay, well that was a little weird. Where's the, I know I lost one somewhere, oh well. So they stuck really well, and they're only semi-dry. I'm wondering if I should put more on here. Well, that PVA stuff is miracle. I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Now I'm wondering, do I need to put anything else on here to, whoop. Maybe it's not that much of a miracle. <laughs> okay, I wanna get these loose beads up here because I have a feeling that as klutzy as I am, there's going to be a disaster with beads on the desk. So let, let, us, let us tidy up a bit. Huh, not too shabby. Right, there's a loose one. An escapee! That's what we call my neighbor's chickens. Sometimes our chickens get out and we'll drive by and we go, oh, six escapees today. The other day we were driving someplace and, um, oh, going to Walmart. And <laughs> she had like six or eight of them out. And I thought, I asked my husband, I said, you think you gotta go over and tell her her chicken's out? We get past her house a little ways and kind of turn back. My husband goes, oh, nope, there she goes. She was walking out towards to corral the rowdy hens who escaped back into the corral. <laughs> it just cracks me up. Oh, see, there's still some loose ones on there. But that's fine. I, You know, maybe I ought to put random... Oh, yes, I will. I'll put random stuff somewhere. Because surely, oh, uh, no, they didn't all stick. Yeah, but that was a good percentage though, don't you think? Uh-oh, it's that time in the morning when one dog is wanting the other to get out of bed and then we spend all our time crying. And I'm not gonna wake anybody up just cause she wants the other one to come out to play. Plus all they do is they go out and they harass the poor birds at the bird feeder. Oh man, that looks so cool. Oh, it looks cool in the camera, I don't know. Let's slide some of these other loose jobbies over here. I really like the way that looks. Let's put some kind of over here. And I will scoot some of these that didn't stick over there over here. And then I will splash out the rest of these. Whoa! <laughs> Just fling them everywhere. Okay. So I'm gonna let these dry for a while. Drink my cup of coffee, watch the news and go about my day, because this is going to be a busy day. I think I'm going to mow while my husband tries to fix the garbage disposal so I can do dishes. I've got a dishwasher full of dishes waiting to be washed. Can't do it because it's all connected to that sink. It all runs through the, the garbage disposal, so going to be a lovely day. <laughs> I'll be back with the final picture later. Okay, after half a cup of coffee, it's kind of dry. Only one bead fell off this time. I took all the other ones off and I'm really nervous about beads falling off with animals. So I've decided to take my Minwax polyacrylic half and half mix, 50% water, 50% the poly Minwax. And oh, a couple more. There we go. This is going to stop momentarily because I've decided I'm going to take a paintbrush. I'm going to dabble some of that over it. It's a matte finish, so it's not going to make it shiny. And it's not going to... Okay, so 
I might not if I can't get the jar open. There we go. I cleaned it off the last time I used it and then it doesn't matter. It's still a bear to get off. Okay, so I'm going to take an ugly paintbrush, one I care nothing about, this. And I'm going to dabble it a little bit over the beads because I don't want them to come up and go on the floor to have a dog eat one and then have all kinds of issues. So I'm hoping that this will help that so that no one gets injured because of my need to do art. I know the cat will chase it in circles until one of the dogs finally eats it if a bead comes off or multiple beads come off. Nope, see, beads are already coming off, and I thought they were on there glued well, so it's a good thing I'm going over it like this then. This might take more than a few hours to dry to make sure it's bone dry. I will hang it up on the clothesline. Oh, sorry about the dog. The clothesline holder. And then I will um, take a photo of it up there, and, and when you will see the photo, it's a tad short of what I wanted, but I'm okay with that because I ain't redoing this. <laughs> That's what makes me okay with it. <laughs> okay, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.